Hello everybody, I'm Bob Baker. I'll be your host along the sidelines for all of today's exciting action starting with the girls final. We'll see a strong matchup between the River East Kodiaks and the Glenlawn Lions as the Kodiaks were the underdogs advanced unexpectedly by defeating the St. John's Tigers. And on the other side of the court we have the Glenlawn Lions who were victorious over the Silver Heights Huskies for a berth into the finals to take on the River East Kodiaks. With more on the play of these two teams, let's go up to our color commentator, Lori May, and our play-by-play -play announcer, Mr. Sean Coates. Thank you very much, Bob Baker. Hello again, everybody. I'm Sean Coates, and joining me is Lori May. Lori, we have what promises to be one of the best girls' finals ever uh, here between River East and Glenlawn. Let's take a look at how they got here. Well, in terms of uh, the Glenlawn Lions, ranked uh, number uh, three in the seating, as we saw, they managed uh, to defeat uh, the Oak Park uh, Raiders 58-46, and then they followed that uh, with a win of 75-49 over the Silver Heights Huskies, as we see on our screen. Uh, what we're looking for in terms of uh, Glenlawn, uh, they've been successful earlier in the year against uh, the River East Kodiaks. Uh, different types of athletes on the team, but it's going to be very, very interesting game. All right. We should be ready now for the public address announcement. Let's go down to Scott Martin. This 4A Provincial Final featuring the Glenlawn Lions and the River East Kodiaks. Glenlawn are finalists of the Cloverleaf Conference. They have a season record of 24 wins and 12 losses. River East are the champions of the Kildonan Conference with a season record of 25 wins and 4 losses. At this time, I'd like to introduce... At this time, I'd like to introduce the non-starters for the River East Kodiaks, the visitors on the scoreboard. Wearing number two, Leah Gaynor. Wearing number four, Nicole Panelegian. Wearing number eight, Carrie Bone. Wearing number 15, Sarah Fuller. Number 22, Pam Paish. Number 33, Lisa Johnson. And now the non-starters for the home team on the scoreboard, the Glenlawn Lions. Wearing number four, Laura Lindback. Number 10, Allison Kane. Number 15, Krista Whitmire. Number 22, Natalie College. Wearing number 42, Aaron Muir. Wearing number 44, Jane Legal Antonia. And wearing number 55, Kyla Brown. And now let's meet the starters for the bidders, the River East Kodiaks. Wearing number 5, Cheryl Jean Paul. Number 10, Ola Samborska. Wearing number 13, Carolyn Bell. Number 14 is Heather. Number 34, Karen Dick. And now the starting lineup for your home team of the Glen Line Lions. Number 11, Tanya Dago. Oh, number 13, Aaron O'Neill. Number 14, playmaking Melissa Finn. Oh, number 20, Patricia Wood. And number 32, Janie Dada. <laughs> Coaches for River East, Uranus Panelegian and E.J. Ogums. Coaches for Glen Lawn, Mr. Brian Kornberger, John Fagan, Mary Roholder. Referees for this evening's games, Mr. Dan Brown, Mr. Dennis Aldersad, and Mr. Andy Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, you can hear the sounds here at the Bison East Gymnasium. Everybody's in the house, and you just wait until the guys' game starts when Mennonite Brethren bring their thousand fans yelling and screaming. It's going to be a good one. We're here at the Bison East Gymnasium. This is the Provincial 4A Girls Basketball Championships. Well, as you mentioned, Sean, 4A Basketball Championships brought to you by Videon Cable 11. And March Madness has hit Winnipeg, and we're ready to rumble. And here we start. Glenlawn starts with possession. Melissa Finn running the offense. She gets it to Dolder, dumps it down low. Shot goes up. It's blocked. 
My number 34, Karen Dick. She's going to be a big factor in this game. Lori, let's talk about her. Well, Karen Dick, number 34 for River East. Uh, we just saw an example there of the, the play that she can uh, do for the uh, Kodiaks. She was just a one-person wrecking crew in their upset win over the Tigers as she poured in 35 points. Quick steal by number 13, Carolyn Bell. One thing we should mention about this River East team, very young. Last year we saw them mostly great tens. They did a great job. They're here in the finals, a bunch of great 11s. It's an amazing story. Well, they've worked really, really hard, Sean, and uh, what's happened there is Coach Uggams and Coach uh, Pendulin have brought the uh, Kodiaks along, and uh, as you mentioned, here they are. They're in the big game. Anything can happen once you get here. Ball goes out of bounds and over to Glenline quickly. Finn brings the ball up the court. She crosses the center line. We've played one minute here in the first quarter. The Provincial 4A Girls Basketball Championships. Finn with the ball. Top of the key. Drives into the foul line. Puts up the shot. Contact made. No call. Ball out of bounds. Over to River East. What we've got is River East comes out straight man-to-man. -man. That's going to be an interesting matchup all evening between Finn and uh, number 13 for the Kodiaks, Carolyn Bell. And Bell now has the ball. Good guard combination between Bell and Cheryl Jean-Paul, as well as Karen Dick, who we see with the ball right now. She plays perimeter as well as post. Very versatile player. Ball goes out of bounds over to Glenlon. We have no score. We've played a minute and a half. No score, as you mentioned, Sean. Girls a little bit nervous. It's going to take a couple minutes for them uh, just to get over the fact that they're both here and they're in the big game. Ben with the ball. She'll run the show all day long, and as you mentioned, great guard matchup there. Dulder right side. She drives face and puts up the shot. She's hacked in the act by number 14, Heather Wedley. Some uh, very good man-to-man -man matchups here. We've talked already about uh, Finn and Bell. We can look at uh, Wood and uh, Dick are going to be down low. And there's another good matchup between Heather Wedlake and Tanya Dulder. Dulder, as we know, very, very athletic. Not afraid to shoot the ball. You get a good look at Tanya there on your screen. And she's going to try and uh, open the scoring here in this game. Province's top volleyball player. She led her team to the provincial finals. They were unsuccessful there, but she is one heck of a talent. And as you see, she drains them both here. 2 nothing is the score. Howard, it's only 1 nothing. We have a correction. A lane violation. It looked like Tanya stepped over the line. Well, that's referee Williams right there. Picked that up. Lane violation. 1 nothing right now. And we should also mention about the referees. We're seeing something very unusual for girls basketball. A three referee system, Lauren. Three referee system here uh, being implemented this year in the uh, 4A. I think it's uh, very good because uh, what we managed to do is we managed to get uh, a lot of the stuff that's missed down low should be picked up here. Jean-Paul gets the ball outside to Dick. It's intercepted by Dulder, who quickly gets it to Finn. Finn bringing the ball across the center court line. one nothing is the score for Glenlon. Goes in to O'Neill. O'Neill down low is fouled on the play. She'll go to the line. And Laurie, let's talk a little bit about Aaron. Aaron O'Neill, post Glenlon lines. Excellent, excellent player inside. As we saw right there, if uh, River East is going to stay man to man, they're they're going to have to front or at least half front Aaron. If you play behind Aaron and uh, let her get down and established on the block shot, she's going to score and or go to the line. Another member of that great volleyball team at Glenlon and ranked number seven in the province for basketball. As you mentioned, great size, but she's had some injuries. But uh, look for her inside. She's got great touch and boy, can she handle the ball. She gets her second free throw, 2 nothing. Long baseball pass down the court. Goes through the hands of number 33, Lisa Johnson now in the game. Ball goes back to Glenlong. Ben crosses the center court line again. Running the show, as we'll see all day long. Now into the perfection, Jenna Dunning gets a ball into O'Neill. Shot to the junction, goes. 4 nothing Lions. Well, what's happening in this man-to-man -man defense by River East right now, what they're doing is they're just giving Aaron O'Neill just too much room right now, Sean. And as we can see, she can shoot that 15-foot uh, jumper, and she's not afraid to take it. Baseline shot by Johnson goes off the backboard. It's grabbed by number 20, Patricia Wood. Huge board underneath. Ball goes out of bounds over to Glenlon. O'Neill inbounds it to Wood. Finn gets a hold of the ball. We played just about three minutes here at this provincial girls final. It's 4 nothing in favor of the Glenlon Lions. Right now, River East going to stay in that tough man-to-man. -to -man. Law pass down low to Patricia Wood. 
Nice basket by Patricia. Well, what we have there, the key, of course, is Michelle Tin on the penetration. Makes the move, nice dish. Gerald John Paul answers, though, with a big three. You talked about some of the athleticism on some of the Glenmont players. Let's talk about Cheryl Jean Paul. She can do it all. Cheryl Jean Paul is probably the best athlete out there on the floor, Sean. And uh, as we can see, she can uh, hit the three and uh, she can take the ball to the hole very, very aggressively. One of the things I like about Cheryl is she is wise out there. She knows when to take the shot, when to drive. And knowing when to score is Patricia Wood as she gets another basket. Well, that's a great deal by Patricia down low. Good read by Tanya. Drops the ball in, and that's uh, two easy buckets right now for Patricia. Karen's going to have to make sure that she gets around that seal. Shot goes up and out. Rebounded by Dolder. Good ben. job by Glenlon on that defensive glass shot. Ben lugging the mail again for the Lions. She'll see a lot of court time this evening. Dolder right side looking for the flash. O'Neal, she gets in the paint. And traveling is called against Glenlon. But we had that situation there. We had Patricia on that side with the seal, but we've got the flash cut by Aaron O'Neill and Ola Samborski a little bit slow. You can't let uh, Aaron come across the key that easily and uncontested on that cut. Shot goes up off the backboard. Taken by Dutta. Gets it to Finn. Finn goes back to Dutta. Left side guarded closely by Jean-Paul. Dutta gets the ball back, she goes in on the drive, and she's blocked, and the foul will go against number 34, Karen Dick. Well, that's an excellent job. That's an excellent job by uh, Janie Dutta. We're going to get a look here on our screen at uh, Janie. What she's uh, going to do here, of course, is once again that penetration. There's Cheryl, as we said, very athletic, but she gets beat to the inside. Janie takes it in hard. Karen has to come forward, take that foul, and that's going to put Janie Dutta at the line to shoot two. 13 leads at 8-3, 5-25, remaining in the first. Dutta hits the first. And she hits them both. 10 threes to score. We have a substitution coming to the game. Number 44, Jean Legal Antonia. Good substitution here for uh, Glenlon. Jane uh, just has to. <laughs> Replacing Janie Dutta, they both just simply go, go, go. What uh, Coach uh, Kornberger has here is three guards that he's just going to simply rotate in and out throughout the game. Johnson gets the ball into the corner. Shot by Peich doesn't go. Glenlon comes up with it. Allison Kane gets the ball to Finn. And a very good ball handler, as you can see on your screen. She'll run it all night for Glenlon. Lob pass goes off the hands and out of bounds. River East to inbound. I'm sure that if Tanya wanted that back, you get a look there on your screen. Uh, Glenlon enjoying that 10-3 lead. Tanya was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place there, Sean. She didn't know if she wanted to dump it into Patricia. She was trying to read that seal. And at the same time, of course, she decided to shoot the ball. Lay up here for Finn. She can't finish. Sean Paul goes after the rebound, but it goes out of bounds. Glenlon will maintain possession. That's great hustle by Leah Gaynor that time as she got back to uh, deflect that shot by Michelle. We get a look again as Cheryl Jean-Paul, as we mentioned, a great athlete, makes some wise decisions on the court, and in very good shape. She's very fit. She can run the court all night if she had to. There's no doubt about the stamina there, uh, Sean, and uh, that's one of the things that uh, helped the Kodiaks as they upset the Tigers was the fact that they were intense throughout. Here's Dutta with penetration once again. Dolder can't hang on to the rebound. River East will get the ball. S the score remains 10-3. Jean-Paul now running the offense. She penetrates, looking for the shot. It doesn't fall for her. Big rebound by Allison Kane. Legal Antonia bringing the ball up the court now for the Lions. She drives on the right side. Jean-Paul tips it out of bounds. Glenlon will still have the ball. We have three substitutions now coming into the game for River East. Well, what we've got here is uh, Coach Pangelin, of course, what he's doing is he's trying to get uh, things uh, just shaken up here a little bit, and uh, he's trying to look for a combination that can stop this uh, Lions push right now. Pass into the middle, slapped away. Ball's on the floor. It goes off of River East. Glenlon will maintain the ball. Checking back into play now for Glenlon, number 13, Aaron O'Neill. Coming out, uh, Patricia Wood, number 20 for Glenlon. She did an excellent job thus far. Doing an excellent job down low, ceiling. Got some great baskets inside, as you mentioned. Inbounds pass intercepted by Samborska, and back comes River East. 
That's Ula with a quick hands taking that ball away. River East got a chance here to try and cut this lead. Quick ball movement goes to Dick, who's back in the game. Shot goes off the side of the backboard. And Dick gets her own rebound. Her second shot doesn't go. Ball's on the floor. People hit the deck. And we have a traveling violation called against River East. Hard work by everyone involved right there, Sean. As we can see, uh, River East going to the glass hard. Glenwan's going to have to make sure that they block out people like Dick and uh, Ola Samborski. Coming back now is Samborski. She's got the ball. She goes up. Count the layup. River East back within five. Legal Antonia gets it across to O'Neill. Seeing some half-court man-to-man pressure right now by River East. Dulder drives. Law pass inside. Shot goes up. Rebound taken by Samborski, and she gets the ball to Bell. Some excellent uh, board work here by both teams. Doing a great job defensively. At uh, The last few times that Glenlon has come down, it's been Samborski on the River East side of uh, center. And uh, as we've seen right off the very beginning of the game throughout this whole first quarter, Sean, it's been uh, Tanya Dulder doing a great job on the defensive glass for the Lions. We see Bell coming out of the game, a great 11 player. As we mentioned, a very young River East team. They're in the finals this year. Look for them to probably be back again here next year. Kane picks up her dribble. She gets it left side to number 32, Dutta. Dutta working closely against Jean-Paul. Kane makes the move, goes up, and it falls for her. She's fouled on the play. Kane will go to the line to complete the three-point play. That is an excellent move by Allison Kane. You got Karen Dick up off her feet. We're going to have a look here at an excellent move by uh, Allison Kane. Ball comes in, she's going to get down low. Dutta puts the ball into Kane, makes her move. Up goes uh, Karen, she gets caught. And more importantly, Sean, that's Karen Dick's second foul. Can't afford to have their big player in foul trouble this early with 2.46 remaining in the first. Jean-Paul coming back for River East. Left side guarded closely by Finn. Drives now, baseline, no one touches her, but she can't finish. Jean-Paul hits the deck hard, Laurie. I think she's going to be okay, but she sure went down hard. She's going to be fine, but we mentioned about the athleticism. You're going to get a good look at the speed here as Cheryl Jean-Paul decides she's going to go baseline. She's going to go by Aaron O'Neill right here and Allison Kane. She's going to take two people on the baseline that time, Sean. We have Coach Kornberger talking. Uh, he's up off the bench. He's talking with some of the officials. I wonder what he's questioning here. I believe it's the foul on the play against Muir. He wants to make sure that uh, that foul, after the great move by Allison Kane down at the other end, goes against Karen Dick. He wants Karen to have two. There's no doubt about it. Any opposition coach uh, playing against <laughs> Coach Pangelin's team and River East would want Karen to start with four. <laughs> Actually, they'd like her not to start. I think that would be the ideal Definitely. situation. But certainly very competitive, and they're not going to give an inch either way, especially with someone as dangerous as Karen Dick. 13-7 is the score for the Lions. They try the breakaway pass. It's deflected out of bounds. Glenlon will hold onto the ball. That's a good look by Aaron O'Neill, but she's got to make sure. Coach Panulin looking on. We saw him here last year with his team in the regional playdowns and has done a lot of great work with his team. He's done an excellent job with the program over there at River East. We've got Aaron O'Neill gets Dutta alone, and unfortunately for the Lions, she can't take it up. Great pass. They've used the law pass as well as the quick pass uh, down court a few times effectively this evening. I'm sure River East is going to try and do something to stop that. Well, they know that River East is going to come with a lot of pressure. There's Aaron O'Neill down low, misses. Ball's taken by Dutta. She's trying to take the shot, and she will. It goes up and down. Count the basket for Janie Dutta. As we can see, Janie not only handles the ball, but she can hit that shot. And we've got to make sure that if we're River East, we've got to get out on her. Great 12 guard playing her final high school game. She'd like to go out a winner here this evening. Currently, she her team's up by seven. Shot is blocked by Aaron O'Neill, but she can't keep it in bounds. Nice block by Aaron. Excellent job by Aaron. You see her hustling, trying to get the ball over on the other side of the court. There's Excellent job by uh, number 42, Aaron Muir, that caused that uh, skip pass to come across to the other side. Zamborski comes out. Dick goes back in. Playing with two fouls. As we mentioned, Jean-Paul kicks it out to Dick. She'll take the three, and she'll make the three. Well, as, basket. as we mentioned, Sean, a workhorse for the River East Kodiaks. Karen can take the ball inside. She can shoot that 15-footer, and as we can see, she's just as comfortable at the three-point circle. And kicks it left side to Muir. 
Dumps it down low. It's taken by Dick. She can't keep it in play. Glenlon will have the ball. What we've got to do if we're Glenlon, if we're looking to pass that ball inside, Sean, we've got to make sure we do it with a lot of force because we just can't float the ball in there. Quick substitutions again. Samborski comes back in. She'll replace Dick, who took a seat as we saw. The ball's passed in quickly to Wood. To Finn. Finn will force a three. It doesn't go for. Rebounded big time by Wedlake. That's a great defensive board by Heather Wedlake. Starts the break now for the Kodiaks. And we'll talk a bit more about Heather and the, and the famous Wedlake family name in just a moment. So we see the play. It's intercepted by Dolder. Quick ball movement by Glenlon. They're starting the fast break. They go quickly down court to a wide open Erin O'Neill. She goes up from the baseline. It doesn't go. It's rebounded. Ball slapped out of Dolder's hands. Rivery's coming back with it. Great offensive board by Dolder. Just unable to put it away. Long three-point shot goes. Sweet shot, Cheryl Jean-Paul. As we can see, Sean, just how quickly Rivers can get themselves back into a ball game. They were down eight at one time. Now they're just down one with just 50 seconds left here in the first quarter of this 4A provincial final. 47 seconds remaining, as you mentioned, in the quarter. Glenn Lund with the ball. Right now, Sean, you can see a few of the uh, Glenlon players are starting to get a little bit winded. This is definitely a pace that favors the River East Kodiaks. Dolder drives down baseline, picks up her dribble, and kicks it back out to Dutta. But it's intercepted by Gaynor. Leah Gaynor driving in on Dutta. Big collision, and we have an offensive foul called against River East. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get another look at this one, Sean. We've got half of the gymnasium here cheering, the other half booing. I don't know if uh, Janie was set. And let, gonna, let's get a look at the contact, Lori. Here we go. We got Leah going hard. Oh, I don't know. I half of one, <laughs> half of the other. It's hard to say. Half of one, six dozen the other. I mean, we get a little uh, look there at those uh, feet of uh, Janie's. If they're moving, she's got to be planted. You get a look here on your screen. 14-13 in favor of the Glenlawn Lions. Once again, the 4-8 through. Oh, that's Patricia Wood missing one inside, but she gets her own rebound and puts it away. She puts it down. Just 17 seconds remaining in the quarter. We'll see River East play for one final shot. Sean Paul gets it to Wedlake. Wedlake drives. She'll go up with it. Contact. No call made. False alive. Three seconds left in the quarter. And River East puts it in to, to bring the lead back to one for Glenlon. Well, that one bothered Coach Kornberger. It seemed like the Lions just kind of gave up on it. And allowed uh, Ola to just simply drop that ball back in. There we go with the first quarter gone. It's a 16-15 lead that's enjoyed by the Glenlon Lions. You're getting just great basketball action here. The girls 4A provincial final here on Vidion Cable 11. Laurie, let's try and see if we can listen in to Brian Kornberger during this quarter break. So they're coming down and shooting threes. The first half of the first quarter, we had pressure on the ball all the time. Now we're starting to play off a of stuff like a zone, and they're going to shoot it. If you get pressure on the ball anywhere when it's over center, they'll dribble it, and then we'll trap them with the monster. But we can't let them just pass it around. So we got to get the pressure on the ball, especially at the top up there. Let's run our half court now. Anytime we score or can set it up. Lori, we said we were going to talk a little bit about uh, Heather Wedlake. Viewers of Vidion know very well her uncle, Bill Wedlake, of course, who uh, has his own Westman show on Vidion Cable M. We, of course, have seen uh, Bill and Heather's father, Ross, who is the assistant coach for the Westman on our Westman broadcast. Uh, let's talk a bit about the importance of the Wedlake family in basketball in Manitoba. Well, the uh, contributions made by the Wedlake family, of course, are second to none when you talk about basketball families here in the province. Uh, they rank right up there with, uh, of course, the Bullocks and uh, the job that uh, they've done here. And the uh, Maze. <laughs> <laughs> what we have is a situation here right now, I think, uh, uh, Uncle uh, Bill and, and Dad Ross, they've got to be very happy with Heather. And as we, just as we're speaking, I'm, the ball goes out there. Heather's not afraid to uh, take that shot. And she's one of the unknown factors. If Heather has a good game, just as she did against St. John's, she can really turn things in favor of the Kodiaks. Very talented, confident player. Only in grade 11. Another one of the great grade 11s here for the Kodiaks. Wood with the ball. Dumps it inside. Kane on the drive. She goes up. It goes off the glass. It's rebounded by number 13, Carolyn Bell. She comes screaming back down the court. Picks up the ball. 
Kicks it out to Wedlake. Back to Bell. Comes cross court to Gaynor. Shot from the baseline. Scored by number 22, Pam Peich. That's a good shot by Pam. She squared up to the hoop. Let it go. Did not hesitate. Excellent job that time. Uh, Coach Benjamin's got to be a pr pretty happy about that turn of events. We have a foul. It's going to go against Pam Peich. Who collided with number 10, Allison Kane. Oh no, uh, referee uh, Brown is going to call, call that offensive. Yep. What happened that time is Allison, she led with the ball. She got Peich. We're going to get a look here on our screen at this one, Sean. We'll see if she actually makes contact. And yes, hit, hit, uh, looked like she hit Pam in the face there when she was trying to turn with the ball. Yeah, what happened is she tried to make room for herself. She led with that elbow and caught Pam square on the jaw. Works great in the squared circle <laughs> of the boxing <laughs> ring, but not necessarily on the basketball court. We've played minute and 15 seconds here in the second quarter a one point lead for River East they're trying to up it there's the shot as Jean-Paul rebounded and kicked back out to Bell Tanya Delder on that side in the first uh, quarter was getting those defensive boards she's got to make sure that they continue to do that throughout the game Bell right side bounce pass into the corner to Peich back to Bell they go inside to Jean-Paul she turns around trying to go up and we're going to have a holding foul called against number 14, Melissa Finn. As far as Melissa was concerned, she had all ball there, Sean. Uh, just as uh, we've seen uh, a couple of times, a few errors made at either end. We're going to have a look here. Uh, we can't lead with the basketball. You lead with the basketball, you don't protect it. We're going to see Cheryl here. She's going to be down in the high post area. Pass is going to come in here to Cheryl. And as you see, as she turns, she puts that ball on the floor and starts to lead with the ball. That, that, that immediately means danger. We have a timeout on the floor over the score. River East 17, Glen 1 16. Let's see if we can Every listen in to Brian Kornberger's timeout. You, know, you get in that uncomfortable position, they want to back up. You came out on 13 and that happened. Now, Jane, what you've got to do is this. You've got a corner shooter down here right now. So if the ball goes to Jean Paul on the side, Aaron, you've got to be running at her. You run at her. I don't think she's. You're not covering low. You're on the ball. Jane will have to. Jane, if it goes to this ball, sheet over here so if it's past there, you can get there in time. You got me? Okay, guys, we're going back to 1 3 1 on offense. 1 3 1. Well, as we can see with Coach Kornberger, just as he mentioned in the first timeout, he wants pressure on the ball. He wants pressure on the ball, especially around that three-point area. And here, as we can see, as the last score that uh, River East managed to put down with Pice hitting from the corner, he wants to take that shot away. He knows that the Kodiaks can shoot. They're here. They're in the final game. They had to work hard to get here. They didn't get a free pass by any means. They can play, Sean. And let's talk a little bit about how they got here. They came here after getting a huge win against the number one ranked St. John's Tigers. Only one loss all year for the Tigers. They were the team of destiny. They won it last year. They didn't lose anybody. And what a huge win for River East. A huge win for River East. Uh, at the same time, uh, kudos to uh, Coach Stevenson and the job uh, done over there by uh, the St. John's Tigers. As you mentioned, only one loss uh, here in the province uh, this year. Once again, uh, we can see, Sean, just how difficult it is to repeat. It is very difficult. Basketball talent in this province is just phenomenal. As we see we have a foul on the play. We'll see who it's assessed against. It goes against number 20, Patricia Wood. That's Wood's first. Her team trails by one. We've played two minutes here in the second quarter, the Provincial 4A Girls Basketball Championships. John Paul goes out of bounds. Glenlon will get the ball. That just a great job by our camera crew there. Right on top of that play, we saw Cheryl lose control of the ball, bounce it out of bounds, and now we've got the Lions coming back. Wood. Picks up her dribble, gets it to O'Neill. They've got to beat the 10-second count. They just get it across. O'Neill back to Fang, gets it down to Dulder again. The lob pass is wide open for Glenlon. They've scored about eight off that tonight. Well, that's a great job once again by Patricia Wood. An excellent seal. You see Patricia there on, her, on your screen. She's doing a great job. She's sealing there and Dick. And what's happening is we're not getting help from the weak side from the Kodiaks. Substitution back into the game now. Number 13, Carolyn Bell. She'll replace Karen Dick, and with those two fouls, Coach Pagnolini is subbing Karen in and out very uh, sporadically. Well, the bottom line, uh, Sean, is uh, if Karen picks up her third, River East could really be in trouble. Heather Wedlake will check back into play the next whistle for River East. They take the shot from the corner. Peich goes off the rim, trying to get the quick break as Finn keeps it alive, but Peich picks it up. 
Gets it back to Jean Paul. She'll run the offense. Three minutes gone here in the second quarter. Shot from the junction is rejected. Big time by number 13, Erin O'Neill, but she can't control the ball. And Erin, with a bit of a look at the official, she wanted a foul call. Well, Erin wanted a foul call. There was no doubt about that. So did uh, half of this gymnasium. But what we saw there was just some great execution. We had seen earlier in the in the uh, timeout that Coach Kornberger, he wanted Erin to come out at the shooter that's out at the top so that that gave the player time to take away the shot from the corner. That's exactly what Erin did, and she blocked the shot. Gaynor gets the ball to Johnson. Back to Gaynor. She shoots the eight-footer, and she's blocked. But there's going to be a foul, and I believe it's going to go against Jean Legal Antonio. Well, once again, just as we saw earlier in the uh, game in the first quarter, penetration. Penetration means instant trouble. Once we get guards that can penetrate into that paint, we're going to get a look here. You're going to see that uh, once Leanna Gaynor gets into that paint, we, we're in trouble. Michelle's got to make a decision. There's no help there. Leah gets into the paint, and there's the foul by uh, Janie. Jane only in grade 10. It's amazing. Such a talented player. Number 44 on your screen there for Glenn Long. Excellent player, Legal Antoniak. Played with her, uh, on our uh, midget provincial team uh, this summer that went to Regina. Did an excellent job. And as we can see here, she is grade 10 playing at the varsity level. Second free throw for Gaynor doesn't go. But again, off the hands of Glenn Long. River East will get another chance. We're tied at 18. Once again, as you mentioned, Sean, River East get another kick at the can here. If we're uh, Glenline, we just got to quit swiping at it, but we got to catch it. Let's get the ball in our hands, and uh, then let's decide what we're going to do. Karen Dick, as you see, with the ball, now back into the game. Kicks it across to Jean-Paul, right back to Dick, looking for an open player. They get some quick ball movement. Dick will drive in, shoot from the junction. She leans in and goes off the glass. I think at this level, you don't have to call it, do you, Murray? No, you don't have to. Call the bottom line is, once again, penetration hurt Glenn Lund, and uh, Karen, she'll take that one. <laughs> she'll take them all like that if she can put them down. Legal Antonia gets the ball to Dulder, looking for the wide open. Aaron O'Neill underneath. She takes it and puts it off the glass for two. That play was a long time in coming. Aaron was open all the way from the foul line down, but uh, Tanya got a look. What we've got to do if we're uh, River East, if we're going to stay man-to-man, -man, that weak side of the defense has got to come to play. Jean-Paul fakes the three, and then she's fouled on the drive by number 11, Tanya Dolder. Well, once again, in the same type of uh, situation, you get a look there on our screen, 20-all with uh, 5.59 left here in the uh, first half. Once again, uh, we've got, uh, whereas it was Aaron O'Neill on this uh, side of the uh, court, on the far side, it's Tanya Dulder that's going to come out at the shoulder. Uh, unfortunately for Tanya, just a little too aggressive. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Video on Cable 11 Sports coverage of the Provincial 4A Basketball Championships. Sean Coates, Laurie May, and Bob Baker bringing all this action from the Bison East Gymnasium as we see Leah Gaynor catch the ball but then fall. Seems like players have been hitting the ground all night here, Laurie. Ball goes off the hands of Wedlake and out of bounds. Glenlon with the ball. Karen shaking her head that time. When she's uh, seven feet away from the hoop, she shouldn't be passing that ball. She should have taken that up, put it off the glass. Let's just see done earlier. That was the thing to do in that uh, situation. And gets it right side to Laura Lynn back in the game, and she makes no mistake on the three-point shot. Laura, as you mentioned, off, uh, comes in off the bench, and she's ready to play. Laura Setter for that Glenlawn team that went to the provincial finals really ran a good offense. The grade 11 guard now on the court. Rebound by Wedlake goes down. Heather gets two. Well, that's once again is that corner shooter that uh, Coach Kornberger mentioned earlier in his timeout. He's worried about that shot. And uh, I'll tell you, if they're going to give uh, Heather Wedlake that shot, she'll score 25 from there. Again, a three-point attempt by Lindback. This time it doesn't go. Jean-Paul with a rebound. She comes back down the court quickly. Makes the drive, but it's stolen by Lindback. Two-on-one opportunity for Glenlon. But Lindback pulls up her dribble and gets hit on the play by Cheryl Jean-Paul. Laurie, you've got to question uh, such close guarding at that point. Well, right there, uh, we got into a situation here where Glenlon comes down and takes a, a couple of quick threes, and they're starting to get into a pace once again, once again that favors the Kodiaks. However, there, the uh, Kodiaks turn the ball over, and uh, Cheryl Jean-Paul, she can't take uh, cheap fouls like that. Let's talk a bit again about the pace of this game. I've seen some of the Glenlawn players as have been going off very winded right now. And that's got to be in River East's advantage towards the end of this, this game. Well, it's, it's definitely, I mean, we talked about the fact that both teams are very athletic. 
Here we go back into Patricia Wood, and she's just having a great time down there. I'll tell you, Allison Kane comes up with a big offensive <laughs> rebound. And you got Kane and uh, Wood are just doing a great job down low for the Lions. Kane looking like she was in the Tyson fight the way she got decked there on the <laughs> hardwood. But once again, Sean, you mentioned the pace of the game. Uh, we talk about, uh, as we're going to get a look here on our screen here, good dish down into Patricia. We got, can't play behind that. And there's Keane with the great offensive rebound, puts it up. She's going to go to the foul line for a couple. But in terms of that pace, uh, we saw here Thursday night the pace that uh, River East played uh, with the uh, St. John's Tigers. And that's the type of game they want to play. As far as Glenlon is concerned, very athletic w as well, but in a different way, Sean. I think what they've got to do is just a little more control, come down, pump that ball down inside, and they can really hurt River East uh, down inside with their height. Sean Paul driving left side. Gets it in, but it's intercepted by Lindback, who comes down the court looking for the breakaway pass. But she's stalled on the play by number two, Leah Gaynor. That was a good job that time by the uh, offside of the uh, Lions defense. Here we get a look at Laura. We saw her in our volleyball coverage earlier in the year. Very good athlete, as many of these players on the court are tonight. Played in a lot of pressure situations. Both, play, uh, both coaches doing an excellent job here, Sean. As we can see, uh, on both sides of uh, the court right now, the uh, substitution's hot and heavy, and uh, both coaches are trying to uh, get combinations that work and at the same time rest a lot of their key players. 24-22 is the score for Glenlon. We've got 4.08 to go here in the first half. Ball's intercepted by Glenlon. Bounce pass to Janie Dutta. She picks it up, goes up, doesn't finish. Ball's on the floor. Who's got it? That's it'll be, good. It'll be River East that comes up with it. Sorry. Good Mark. hustle by uh, Janie, but once again, Cheryl Jean-Paul. I mean, uh, Janie, of course, she wants to take that ball to the hoop and go hard, but when you're going against somebody with the athleticism of Jean-Paul, she makes you think uh, uh, just a little bit. Again, Karen Dick trying to check into play here. And it looks like we'll also have substitutions for Glenn Lund. Both Dalder and O'Neill come back into play. Well, as I mentioned uh, earlier, Sean, both coaches doing an excellent job working their benches. They've managed uh, to uh, get a lot of players involved in the game. The uh, tempo of the game has not suffered because of it. If anything, every once in a while it might get perhaps a little bit too intense and a little too carried away. River East has put everyone but one player in so far. And we still have 3.36 to go in the first half. Ball's kicked back out to the Lindback. Looks for a wide open Jeannie Dutta down low. She can't finish. Rebound by O'Neill. She goes up strong, but the ball's knocked out of bounds. That's an excellent look by Lindback. Once again, that weak side of the defense there for uh, River East. They're going to have to make sure that they keep all the players in front of them. That time, uh, Ula Samborski. She's got to drop a little bit lower. Quick and bounce play to O'Neill. She bounces it to Dutta. Goes high off the glass, but it's rebounded by Wedlake. Jeannie's got to put those away. Those are two excellent looks that she... Uh, got from teammates she's got to put those away Gainer with the ball she looks for Dick down low Dick drives baseline goes up with a six footer it doesn't fall for her. Samborski with a rebound no it's Dick she goes and she makes the shot the second time well we got Glenlon go to a 1-3-1 one, one zone there once again Karen Dick penetrates along the baseline penetration is going to hurt any zone but more importantly Sean you've got to take care of that defensive glass and across the Dutta lobs it in but it's intercepted by Dick Dick driving back on Finn. She goes up and off the glass. It's rebounded by Lindback. Once again, we're Glenlon. Don't play around with the ball. Don't lob it in there. Good, strong pass into the post. Lindback hands off to Finn. Looking for a wide open Dolder down low. There's contact. And picking up, I believe, her second foul will be number 14, Heather Wedley. Well, that was a good look that time uh, by the Lions as they moved the ball around. As a result, we're going to have Tanya Dolder go to the line. She's... Uh, Going to shoot two here. We're tied at 24 with 2.29 to go in the first half. Let's see if we can get a look at that last play, Lori, which took Tanya to the line. As Tanya makes the first. Doesn't look like we're going to get a look at that, but we'll see Dalder take but not make her second. Glenlon with a one-point lead. 
a good job by Glenlon as they push that offensive glass. But with just uh, two minutes left here in the first half, back comes Cheryl Jean-Paul. That's a touch, and the ball's going to stay in the hands of the River East Kodiaks. 2.22 to go. First half, one-point lead for Glenlon. Jean-Paul, three-point territory. Gets it inside. Sam Borski goes up and off the glass. Rebounded by O'Neill. Good look that time by Cheryl Jean-Paul. Ula's got to take that ball up a little stronger. Dulder dumps it into Wood. Wood trying to turn around. She's in trouble. She kicks it back up to Finn. Long three-point attempt off the back of the rim. Back comes River East, three on two. Jean-Paul, she's going to go one on two, but she can't finish. Rebound by Dulder. Finn looking for the breakaway past O'Neill. She catches it, but back into play is Wedlake. And just the presence of Wedlake forces O'Neill to knock the ball out of bounds. Bell with the ball to Jean-Paul, 140 to go in the half. Bell fakes it, then takes it from the junction. It goes for one point lead now in favor of the Kodiaks. Penetration once again by the Kodiaks. This is a pace that favors the Kodiaks. We've got uh, Patricia Wood and Aaron O'Neill. They're winded out there, Sean. Legal Antoniak on the drive. She doesn't finish. Three on one now. Jean-Paul leading the rush. She goes up and the shot doesn't go for it. She gets the rebound. Second attempt falls. That gives uh, the Kodiaks a three-point lead with just a minute left here in the first half. Once again, as I mentioned, uh, Glenlon Lyons starting to wear down here in these last few minutes of the half. Legal Antonia crossing the center line, guarded by Jean-Paul. Ball goes right side, Dulder dumps it down to Wood. Turn around off the glass. We've seen that all night long for well, Patricia. That's, that's a great job by Patricia. That time she didn't play around with the ball. She made her decision early, went up strong. She's lucky, uh, Heather Wedlake that is, that she didn't get called for a third there. Bell. Gets it to Wedlake. Wedlake at the foul line makes the nice move, but she's called for the traveling violation. 32 seconds left here in the half. If I'm the uh, Lions, I'm going to go for one shot here. I'm going to relax. I'm going to get a couple subs in if I can. I see Coach Kornberger's taking Aaron O'Neill out for the half. He's put Kane back in. What we want to do is we want to get the ball to Michelle Finn here, and let's play for one shot if we're the Lions. They get the ball into Wood. She's looking for Finn, and she gets her the ball. 27 seconds to go, and I think you're right, Laurie. They're going to play for one here. Legal Antonia quickly into Kane. Maybe they won't. <laughs> Ball saved by Glenlon. 15 seconds to go. Finn drives in, takes the shot off the glass, doesn't go for. Again, ball off the hands of the player, not a bounce. It looks like the girls just really have to just grab the ball out there. Well, we're having uh, a lot of that situation happen throughout the first half. Glenlon's really fortunate here. They're going to get another free kick at the can here. Dulder gets it off the law pass. She goes up. It doesn't fall for. Rebounded by O'Neill. And she's going to be called, or cor correction, Wood's going to be called for the push-off foul. That's going to be offensive foul, as you mentioned. Uh, great out-of-bounds play that time, uh, using the ability of uh, Tanya Dulder. They just inbounded the ball. That foul is going to go against uh, Patricia on the push-off. And quickly, that'll bring Aaron Muir into play. We're just going to check uh, some things at the scorer's desk. It should be 11 seconds, I believe, left in the half. The clock kept running after that foul was called, I, I believe because they thought the ball was going to be inbounded and they let the clock yeah. continue. I think we also the thing that we're looking at here, that's Patricia's second foul, and that's going to be a bonus. Right, bonus situation now. And they have reset the clock. They've put it to 11 seconds. And stepping up to line will be Ula Samborski. And again, some discussion. I think they're just going to clarify things at the bench. Well, right now, Coach Kornberger wants to know if that's a shooting foul here. And he's also checking the time. He's asked for it to be reset to eight seconds. And the referees have agreed. And it will be eight seconds now left in the half. Samborski still awaiting her free throw opportunities at the line. She hits the first of the bonus two-point lead for the Kodiaks. Ola Samborski, a real sleeper there for the Kodiaks. I'll tell you, Sean, I really like the way this young lady plays. And I like the way she makes free throws. Nothing but net. Eight seconds now for Glenlon to get a last shot off. Finn's got the ball. Four seconds. Three. She's going to have to put it up in desperation. She does. It doesn't go for her. And there's the horn. 
Well, that was a good look for Michelle as she managed to get down to about 18 feet and let it go. Here we go after one one half of play here, a 30-27 lead for the River East Kodiaks. You're enjoying the girls' 4A triple final here on Videon Cable 11. Okay, Laurie, let's, before we take a break, let's talk a little bit about that first half. The pace seemed to favor River East, and uh, maybe that uh, possible fatigue factor could affect Glenlawn in the second half. Well, as far as uh, the game is concerned, and, and the pace, we've mentioned it a couple of times here in the first half, Sean, I think without a doubt that it favors uh, River East. Uh, when we look at people like Cheryl John Paul, Cheryl John Paul can run all night, there's no doubt about it. Karen Dick is no slouch either. So as far as I'm concerned, if I'm the Lions, I think what we want to do is we want to make this more of a half court game than we do a full court game. It'll be more in their favor. Okay, we are now going to take a short break, but we'll be back with second half action right here on Videon Cable 11 Sports. Standing with me is Darren Klopik, the coordinator of the Provincial 4A Championships. Tell me, Darren, how important is it to the schools of the teams that are in this tournament? Uh, the whole week is very special. There's 28 schools uh, sitting on the sidelines, and the whole basketball community focuses in on this weekend. Uh, the kids have a Final Four luncheon, there's a press conference, and, and the whole weekend is built around, around the eight teams that are, are good enough to get here. And it's something very special that they'll, uh, they'll remember for the rest of their, their high school days and their athletic careers. So, there's a lot of players that are graduating. What is the next step for them? Uh, both tonight and throughout the past three days, there have been quite a few university coaches here watching, mostly local coaches. Uh, the boys' year, it isn't a banner year for kids graduating. Uh, you'll see Brad Unger in the final, who will, is probably the top recruit along with Dwayne Burkett from Murdoch McKay. The girls' field is a lot stronger, um, though with River East, they're mostly grade 11 kids, so next year's the year they'll be looked at, but the girls' is a very strong field. I'm sure the university coaches are licking their lips uh, you know, with a, a good graduating crop of girls that will have step in and be able to play university. That's great, Darren. Congratulations on a great tournament. Let's go back up to the action with Randy and Lori. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob Baker, <laughs> Sean Coates, and Laurie May here. Bob owed me. I was calling him Missy Purchase all throughout the Continental Cup, so he's getting me back here. Good. We're just about ready for second half action. The score, River East 30, Glenlawn 27. Laurie, let's talk a bit about that first half again and what these two teams have to do as they regroup here in the second. Well, I think what we have to do, if we're the River East Kodiaks, we've got to like the way the flow is going. We've got to keep the pressure up. And uh, what we want to do is we want to get uh, Karen Dick and... Uh, Cheryl Jean-Paul Luce. If we're the uh, Glenlon Lions, I think we want to make this a half-court game. And right now, Glenlon trying to set up their offense. Ball goes over to River East, though. Ganey tried to stop that ball from going out, but we had a little miscommunication. Ball goes to Bell in the corner. She's guarded closely by both O'Neill and Dutta. Good pressure by Glenlon. Jean-Paul tries to settle things down, but she quickly whips the ball across to number 15, Sarah Fuller in the game. Sean Paul fakes the three. She dishes it off to Wedlake. She'll take the long distance shot off the front of the rim. Bodies contacting all over the place underneath. 
referees letting them play. Well, that's a good job by referee Alvestad there on the baseline. Just as you mentioned, Sean, letting the girls play. We're going to let the girls decide what's going to be the outcome here of this 1996 4A girls final. Wood goes off the glass for two, cutting the lead to one. Well, if you ask what the Glenlawn Lions want to do, Sean, you just saw it right there on your screen. We want to make this a half-court game. We want to put the ball down inside. Jean-Paul, as you mentioned, she wants to cut loose here in the second half and display some of her skills. Bell with the ball. She's now going to set up the offense. One point lead in favor of River East. Jean-Paul drives in, slaps it across to Wedlake, gets it back out to Bell. River East regroups. Wedlake picks it up. Ball goes inside to Samborski. She'll take the eight-footer off the glass and down. Three-point lead re-established by River East. Excellent job by Ula. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Sean, really a silent factor there. A real sweeper. Ula's not afraid to take the ball to the hole. O'Neal on the drive. She's fouled on the play. We'll see who it goes against. I believe it'll be number 15, Sarah Fuller. Good penetration that time by uh, Aaron as she took care of the ball. And indeed, the foul does go against Fuller. Referee Dan Brown making the call. Dan, known to many of the Bison fans here in this area and uh, as a former great player. And we just had a shot on the screen of someone you know very well, Laura, your wife, who is now the latest provincial basketball champion. Her team, St. Mary's, defeated St. John's Ravens Court in the AAA championships. We've just got all the updates. And maybe if you can, uh, Lori, read us off uh, some of the results from the AAA tournament. Well, as you mentioned, uh, Sean, we have uh, the St. Mary's Academy, the uh, 1996 AAA girls champions, that uh, game that just finished against uh, Ravenscourt. Uh, St. Mary's defeated St. John's Ravenscourt 79-70 to in the final. We have uh, Claudine Cook from Westwood as one of the All-Stars, along with Pam Bartkowski from Swan River, Jennifer Bottero from uh, St. John's Ravenscourt, Christina Blau from St. Mary's, and Michelle Dick from Garden Valley. The MVP of the tournament from St. Mary's, Gabby Macra, who poured in 42 <laughs> points in the final. 42 of the 79. Great game for her. And, uh, Congratulations to Debbie, your wife, and uh, the rest of the team. A great year for them, and uh, hats off to them. Part of one of the great provincial championships run by the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association all around the province. Well, we had uh, an interview there with uh, Darren Klappick, who's uh, convening this uh, 4A tournament here. And as uh, Darren mentioned, it's a weekend that's uh, just great for all of the high school kids. We've got the A's, the double A's, the triple A's, and the four A's all going on, on this weekend. And it's just a great basketball weekend for the kids. Part of Manitoba's March Madness, as you, as you have mentioned many times here, as we take a look at the live action going to the line, will be number 33, Lisa Johnson, as she was fouled on her attempt. Her team trails by one. It's 33-32 in favor of Glen Line. But we're going to have a look here what's going to happen. Oh, we just catch the tail end as uh, we have the ball taken up strong and that foul goes against number 11, Tanya Dulder. That's Tanya's second. And while two fouls at this point in the game isn't too bad, they really don't want to see Tanya get into foul trouble. She's such a valuable part of this Lions team. Air ball on the second shot. Ball will go out of bounds and over to Glenlawn. As you mentioned, Sean, no rim on that, so what will happen is uh, Glenlawn will get the ball inbounded on the side. And for the viewers at home that might be wondering, on a free throw, a missed free throw, it's got to at least touch the rim or the backboard to be in play. Ben gets the ball to Dulder, who waits a pass that took forever to get there. She misses the shot, she gets her own rebound, but it goes out of bounds over to River East. Well, maybe if we can, we'd like to get a look at that one again, because that got Coach Kornberger up off the bench. There's a lot of contact there and no foul called. Shot goes long, but it's taken by O'Neill. Gets the fast break going. It's Finn. She's got legal Antoniak with her. Goes off the glass, but it doesn't drop for It's rebounded by River East. Janie could have taken one more dribble. She wanted to get rid of that basketball, and unfortunately it just didn't drop for her. Sean Paul gets it across to Gaynor. Back into Jean Paul. Baseline <coughs> shot. Doesn't fall. It's rebounded by Dulder. Kicks out to Finn. Finn making a nice move on Gainer. She comes in with a layup. And she's swatted by number 22, Pam Peich, who picks up the foul. Once again, Sean, that all goes back to the defensive board. We're going to have 
Oh, we're going to, as we mentioned, we look at uh, Tanya Dulder with a great defensive board here on our replay, however. We're going to back up and, oh, there's, oh, the, there's, the, contact. there's the contact that got <laughs> Coach Kornberger excited. Ula's got her, uh, pardon me, her fist clench. She thinks she got away with one. Good work by our crew getting that replay. Good incidents of contact shown by our broadcast crew. Once again, Sean, excellent defensive uh, rebounding by uh, Tanya Mulder. Started that uh, fast break, and that's happened the last couple of times here for the Glenlawn Lions. Ben hits the second. Three-point lead now for the Lions. They lead at 35-32. Ball goes out of bounds. Chance for Glenlawn to increase their lead. Came to Wood. Guarded closely by Zamborski. Good defense by Ola. Here, Coach Kornberger, you don't want Patricia Wood dribbling that ball up there. You wanted him to shelf in his hand. However, Patricia's doing a great job, as we can see, down low. This is where she's good. And that's where Coach Kornberger wants her, scoring all those easy points underneath as we see Finn go off the glass with a nice little runner. Well, what we had is a bit of a deflection there off a pass from Patricia Wood. Oh! Back be over <laughs> violation called. We've seen just about everything here in this Provincial 4A Girls Basketball Final. That back over call made by referee Brown, that got Coach Kornbigger up because he thought Vigo Antoniak was going to get nailed with a foul. Glenlawn to inbound. Allison Kane will put it in. It looks like Glenlawn's going to run a stack at the center court line. And they break. And they get a breakaway opportunity. It's Wood who goes up on the drive, but she's fouled. And I believe Zamborski will get the call. Lori, let's take a look at one of those last plays here. Here's the deflection. Michelle Finn pounces like the quick little cat she is and puts it down. The tenacious jungle cat with the two. And then we see the call at the center court line. Dan Brown making the signal. That's uh, excellent pressure by Legal Antoniak and by Finn caused that problem there. But as we can see with 6.22 left here in the uh, third quarter, things are getting tight. If uh, we get a shot of that uh, Glenlawn bench, Coach Fagan and Coach... Uh, Kornberger, the suit jackets are long gone, and they're into this game. Everybody's into this game. The Bison East gym is just about full here now, and we're ready for quite a finish here on video on Cable 11. 39-32 is the score for Glenlawn. Cheryl Jean-Paul has fouled by number 44, Jeannie Legal Antoniak. Just a reminder, you're watching video on Cable 11 sports coverage of the provincial 4A high school basketball championships. Sean Coates, Lori May, and Bob Baker here at the Bison East Gymnasium. Karen Dick gets it across to Cheryl Jean-Paul. Karen Dick's got to get more into this offense if her team's going to get back in this one. They're down by seven with six minutes to go in the third. <coughs> Shot from the baseline doesn't fall. Again, another weak side rebound by Dulder. She's just been eating up the glass tonight, Laurie. Well, that's a great job by Dulder. What we've got is uh, Glenlon in that zone. River East showing great patience, Sean, moving the ball, getting a good shot away, but uh, they've got to put it down because if they don't, Dulder just takes care of the glass. Four on one opportunity, and Dick makes a nice dish to Jean Paul, who finishes off the glass. Great decision that time by Karen Dick. Fenn gets the ball to Kane. Back to Fenn. One long. Showing a bit of patience, trying to get in the half court offense. As we've mentioned, more to their advantage. They're trying to set the tempo here. Legal Antoniak on the drive. Tries to get it across the wood, but it's intercepted by Zamborski. Karen Dick driving the length of the court. Kicks it out to Jean Paul. Three-point territory. It goes. Cheryl with nothing but net. Look out if we're the Glenlawn Lions. Look out. We mentioned, Sean, numerous times already in the broadcast how quickly River East can get back into the game. And in the last minute, they've cut a seven-point lead to two. And we have a foul called on the play. We'll see where it goes. Actually, correction, we have a timeout on the play. And here it is, Lori. Here we got uh, Karen Dick going to make an excellent job here. Excellent decision as she dishes off to Cheryl John Paul. Avoids the uh, offensive foul. And as you Lori.
Sorry, it was hard to pick up what Coach uh, Pagnolinian was saying to his team there, but uh, I'm sure he just wants them to keep running the ball and, and getting back into this one. When they get running, they're hard to stop. Well, Highness Pangelinen, he's done a great job uh, over at River East. As you uh, mentioned, we saw them as a group of great tens, and now here they are in the big game, uh, grade 11s mostly, and uh, he likes the upbeat uh, tempo game. There's no doubt about it. That plays into his favor, and uh, there's still a lot of basketball time left here. You get a look there on your screen. Glenlon enjoying only a two-point lead, 39-37. And we have a great one going here at the Bison East Gymnasium. We thought right from the start this would be one of the, if not the best, provincial girls championship and it certainly lived up to its billing thus far very fast paced exciting game we have a foul on the floor as you see Anis Pagnolini not happy with that call well coach uh, Pagnolini at that time uh, the foul goes against Samborski as far as he's concerned it was O'Neill that was pushing off he was looking for the offensive foul and that's Samborski's third Finn with the ball trying to run off the screen set by Kane guarded closely by Gaynor Ben now in trouble. Good defense by Gaynor. So ball's intercepted by Dick. Wrestling match with Golder. Dick wins it. She comes back down the court, streaking with the ball. Picks up a dribble, kicks it out to Jean Paul. Looking for Zamborski down low. Nice pass. Zamborski goes up strong. Doesn't hit it. Gaynor will take the short 10 footer. Almost a half gainer on the play there, Laurie. Yeah. That's a great offensive board by Pam Pice. That's what made that work for rather uh, Kodiaks. Laura Lindback. Back into the game now for Glenlon. Gets it back to Finn. 3.55 to go in the third. We're tied at 39. Dulder in the paint. She goes up but kicks it out and she's called for the three second violation. Lori, Tanya's got to put that shot up. Well there were just a matter of little indecision. She wasn't quite expecting the pass from Kane. Got it and as a result she was back a little bit on her heels. And there's Sam Borski with the big bucket. And she's fouled on the play, and she's going to go to the line to try and complete the three-point play. Well, what we've got here, Sean, we've got a situation where we're looking at a 9-0 run here by the uh, River East Kodiaks, and they've taken the lead, and right now the Glenmont Lions, they're going to have to regroup. Heather Wedlake checks back into play for River East. Patricia Wood back in for Glenlon. Let's get a look at that last play, Lori. Well, what we've got here, good look, good heads-up look by Cheryl Jean-Paul. Nice feed inside to Samborski. She takes it up strong against O'Neill. Aaron commits the foul. And Samborski hits a second. We have a 10-point run right now by River East. And Glenlon trying to get things going. Almost a travel as Kane puts the glue to the shoe and hits the floor. I, it's amazing she held her pivot foot. That's a long, long stretch by Allison. Ben across the Lindback. She'll take the three and it goes. Laura Lindback hitting a huge three for the Lions. That's a big answer back for the Lions and what we're looking at now, three minutes left here in the third quarter, Sean, and we're tied 42 all. Double dribble violation called against Rivers. Glenlon will get the ball. Finn across the Lindback. She's in three-point territory, but she passes inside to O'Neill. Goes up strong. Shot falls short. Wood with a huge rebound and a basket. Patricia playing well under the glass. That's a good job by Patricia once again at the offensive end. That time the Lions, they, that's their bread and butter, Sean. They've got to put the ball in there. Great block by O'Neill. Aaron O'Neill says, get out and stay out. Well, right now we've got a little bit of an emotional swing. Once again, momentum back in the favor of the Lions. Here's Heather Wedlake. She's going to take it along the baseline. Looks underneath to Ula Samborski. Oh, we've got Coach Pantelina is up. <laughs> and Dick hits the turnaround jumper. Lots of contact going on. The referees are just letting them play as we see Coach Pangeline. We get a look there, but it's amazing how excited and uh, animated these coaches get. But that two points kind of takes that away. 44-44. 2.22 to go here in the third. Just a reminder, you're watching video on Cable 11 Sports coverage of the Provincial 4A Championships as Patricia Wood again hits a key layup underneath. That's excellent job by Patricia. We've been saying it all night. Penetration down at the other end here, however, by Cheryl Jean-Paul. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor called by River East. The score, Glenlon 46, River East 44. There's 2.06 to go in the third. And let's see if we can listen in on the River East timeout. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, let's go. Let's go, Again, let's go. Well, as we mentioned, Coach uh, Pangelin and what we... Just what he wants to do, he knows that that's Glenlon's bread and butter. He wants to take that away. What he wants, first of all, is, first of all, let's not let Patricia get that, uh, in, first of all, that position down there. Secondly, if she does get that position, let's try in front her. Let's put a little more pressure on the ball in terms of the pass. It's just simply getting in there too easy, Sean. And we're looking at the Kodiaks fans. <laughs> is that a Kodiak? I'm not sure. It's, I've never really met one, but... <laughs> Whatever it is, it's a grisly thought to see him dancing like that inside. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's quite a Kodiak. I don't know. That, you wouldn't want to meet that in the dark alley, <laughs> never mind in Bisonese Gym. <laughs> Which looks like a dark alley at the best of times. Time. Shot, three-point attempt by Dickos off the front of the rim. Wood with a defensive rebound this time. And she's playing very well for the Lions. Her team up by two here, less than two minutes to go. Right now we've got it, uh, Patricia Wood playing an excellent game for uh, Coach Kornberger. He's got to be happy with her performance at both ends of the court. Kane with a pass intercepted by Jean-Paul. Good read by Cheryl as she comes back down the court. Excellent job by Cheryl. Once again, you can't hesitate with that ball, especially against someone with the athletic ability of Cheryl Jean-Paul. This one's going to go against Heather Wedlake, I think. And I believe that's Heather's third, if I'm not mistaken. So we get a good look at the grade 11 player. She's got a good future ahead of her in basketball. You see the signal. Yes, it is. It is Heather's third. Team foul number six of the half. And they're, River East is dangerously close to the bonus situation here with 136 to go in the third. Kane with a lob pass down to Lindback. Lindback pulls it out to three-point territory, and she takes it. It doesn't go for it. Rebounded by Jean-Paul, who hits the deck, and we've got to have... No, we don't have a foul. We have a traveling violation called. And not only is Coach Pangelinen off, assistant coach E.J. Ogums is off the bench. They just can't believe what they're seeing here. Well, on that call, you know that there's got to be something wrong if it's going to get E.J. off the bench. She's pretty calm and collected at the best of times. That gets her up. You know she's angry. She's played in national finals. She's been all over the place, so... She's seen the best and she's seen the worst. And I think we know what she'd say tonight about the officiating. But they're letting them play tonight. They're letting them play. And uh, that time we've got Aaron O'Neill comes away with the offensive glass, goes up strong. And uh, we're going to get a look here at our at, on our screen. Excellent job by Aaron as she reads. She gets the foul called. And that's the seventh foul, Sean. And for uh, 11 minutes and 23 seconds left in this game, the Glenlawn Lions are going to be in the bonus situation. That ball has got to go inside. Three-point lead now extended to four. It's 48-44, and as you mentioned, 123 to go in the third. Quick lightning baseball pass down the court. Goes out of the hands of Gaynor, and back come the Lions. I don't know if Pat Borders could have stopped that one. <laughs> that was a heck of a throw. O'Neal from the junction goes off the back of the plate. It's rebounded by Lindback. She pulls it out. Glenlon setting up the offense. Kane to Finn. Gets it into Wood. They go down low. And, Lori, you mentioned that's what they've got to do because if they're not scoring, they're getting fouled down low. What we've got to do if we're Glenlon, we want a half-court game. We want to move that ball. We want to show some patience. We don't need any three-pointers. We want to move that ball, and we're looking inside. You've got Dulder. You've got Wood. You've got O'Neal. You've got Kane. You've got to use them. Foul called on the play against Glenlon. So we get a good look at the great 12 guard, Leah Gaynor. It's a good substitution by Coach uh, Kornberger. He's going to change up both those guards. There's only 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. Doesn't want any more fouls. And they'll get the 50-second rest here. And, of course, the break at the quarter. Pass inside. Intercepted by Aaron O'Neill. Great reflexes by Aaron to pick up that one. Coach Kornberger here. we got to go for one. 36 seconds to go in the third. And you're right. They are going to play for one. They have a six-point lead. They get the ball into wood. They look down low again. Shot doesn't go. Kane is just decked by Karen Dick, and I believe that's Karen's third. That's going to be Karen's third. That was a good look. Once again, in that man-to-man -man defense by River East, they've got to take care of those ball cuts. We're going to get a look here, and the thing that makes this happen is Erin O'Neill. Watch her here. as You can see her as she's on the right side of the key. Here she's got an excellent ball cut. She's got Ola beaten. We cannot let that happen if we're River East. 50-44 to 44 is the score. In favor of the Lions. Allison Kane misses the front end of the bonus. Ball's rebounded by Dick, who's playing very tough. And she gives a shove to Aaron O'Neill. 
Let's look for that in the fourth quarter. It's starting to get rough out there. Well, it's definitely getting rough. We've got two teams here that want to win bad, Sean. O'Neill guarding the opposite 13. Takes the screen from Karen Dick. That's the matchup to watch. Dick and O'Neill. We've only got five seconds left in the quarter. Jean-Paul, three-point territory. She hits the deck. Dick goes up with a shot at the buzzer. Karen Dick with a three-pointer at the buzzer. Oh, uh, assistant coach John Fagan is up. He's looking for the travel ball, and I have to agree with him. We'll try and get a replay of that one. In any case, Karen with a great shot at the buzzer. The score, Glenlawn 50, River East 47. So get a good look at Karen Dick. She can score from anywhere, as we've mentioned, underneath. And she hits a three-pointer here at the conclusion of the third quarter. Let's get a quick look at it. Here's Karen. She's going to move the ball here. We've got to have a look here at Sharon. Jo there we go. There's the travel ball. But Cheryl stays with it, pushes the ball to Karen. She hits the big three, cuts the lead to three points. As you mentioned, Sean, ten minutes left here. You get a good look at the crowd. This place is packed, and we're going to end up here with a big finish. Some great basketball. Let's go down to Bob Baker, who's standing by with two great basketball players. Take it away, Bob. Thanks a lot, John. Standing with me is Lara Asplund and Janet Taylor. They were both, two years ago, they were both members of the John Taylor Pipers who took the four A's. Tell me, Lara, what was your experience in that tournament? Oh, well, that was an excellent experience because it's something that we had worked on for three years coming up. And it was just for us to win it that year. It was such an amazing feeling, really. Because we had worked, all, all three of, all of us had worked so hard over the three years. And it was just to end our final, um, our, our high school year that way, it's a great accomplishment. So do you ever get back back to the old school? I mean, I'm a graduate from John Taylor as well. I, I don't get back to that often, but do you ever get back to see the coaches and everything? Yeah, well, I see the co I see the Simpsons here tonight, you know, and uh, we always, we have like a year anniversary party or a two-year anniversary party. The team all gets together and um, we get to see each other. I get back to the school a little bit and see some of the players and some of the old teachers. So, so, so you've made it from that transition to the Westman. How, how is that going? Oh, well, it's been a great experience with the Westman, obviously, winning the national championship last year. And we had a not bad season this year, too. And obviously, it's been a great experience. It's a great program. Great. Thank you very much. And again, on my other side is, is Jenna Taylor. Jenna, you were on that same team. How was your experience with that? Well, I found that playing in the provincial finals has been invaluable for the university experience. Um, being in front of a big crowd like that, all the excitement, it, it really makes you focus on basketball, and especially this year in the national finals. I mean, there was, you know, a thousand people there, and, and it's something we've been through before, playing in the, in the provincial finals. And, and, I mean, winning is always, always a uh, great experience and gives you a lot of confidence to go into university. That's great. Congratulations on winning the CIs with the Bisons. Let's go back up to Sean and Lori. Thank you very much, Bob. Good work down there with last year's champion, Lara Asplin, and of course this year's champion, Jana Taylor. And uh, just a reminder, we're in the fourth quarter here. Video on Cable 11's coverage of Provincial 4A basketball. Glenn Long leads it 50-49 to with 8.54 to go in the fourth. Well, both of those... Uh, players, as we said, one going to the University of Manitoba, one over at uh, the University of Winnipeg. They make mention, of course, of uh, Coach Carol Simpson and the wonderful job that she does over at John Taylor. We mentioned, Sean, about the grassroots programs here, and as uh, Bob mentioned, with uh, Manitoba winning the CIU championship this year, that's four straight years in a row that that uh, championship banner has resided in a, pr in a Manitoba University. And some of the old basketball banners are up here in the Bison East Gymnasium. Who's going to take the provincial championship? We don't know yet. The lead is one point in favor of Glenlawn, but River East's Cheryl Jean-Paul is at the line to shoot two. There we get a look at some of the great volleyball championships under Ken Bentley and Garth Pischke here, and just to the right of that, wrestling banner won by Nat Briganti and Bob Molly, and then, of course, Colleen Dufresne's great win in 87-88, beating a very talented Victoria team in the semis, and then a great Calgary team in the final. And, of course, Colleen did a wonderful job this year with her team. A wonderful job uh, this year, once again, by the uh, women's basketball team. Uh, in terms of uh, Victoria, I know there's a soft spot in your heart for any of those teams that come out of uh, Victoria, and they uh, usually are prefixed with uh, words like great and awesome, but uh, they've come up a little short in the last couple of years. <laughs> they have. 
Well, since I left the program, I have to admit, they, they have gone downhill. I don't want to, you know, slight Kathy Shields at all, but uh, um, we'll just leave it at that, I think. Uh, last time I talked to Kathy, she did mention you. <laughs> In a negative way, I'm sure. We have a one-point lead right now for River East, and they have the ball. Karen Dick crosses the center court line. Kicks it out to Leah Gaynor. River East now content to set up a half-court offense. Not only a half-court offense, but they're taking a little time off the clock. They're going to see if Glenlon's going to come up and play some man, a little bit of a stall. This is a little different for Coach Kornberger. He's usually at the other end of this. He's the one running the delay against his team. And a nice basket on the part of the Kodiaks. Sam Borski gives them a three-point lead. Ben avoids the trap at the half court and gets it across to Legal Antonia. Back out to Finn. What we need now, Glenlon, let's move the ball. Remember where we're going with it. They want to try and get it inside to get it to Wood. Makes a nice pass on a great ball cut by Erin O'Neill. She hits the deuce and she's going to the line to complete the three-point play. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at two teams that definitely deserve to be here. We saw excellent execution down at the other end by the Kodiaks. They went into the short delay, got the ball where they wanted. Then we have the Glenlon Lions come back. They run exactly what Coach Kornberger wants. We're going to get a look here at our screen. Michelle Finn, as you mentioned, Sean, the floor general. This is going to go into the high post here. Post to post right where we've got. Good job by Aaron O'Neill. Puts it in. Hits the three-pointer. We're looking at a tie game again. Seven and a half to go. 53 all's the score. River East will have the ball. Get a look at the two guards talking on the play. Of course, Jean-Paul getting some instructions from the bench. She's now going to run the offense. And they're going to pull it out again, Laurie. It looks like run some time off the clock. Well, what we've got here is some good patience being exercised by both teams. They know what their coaches want them to execute. And, yes, we know that uh, motion is a big factor here in this type of game. We go here. Beautiful job by Cheryl Jean-Paul. The little half hook from the foul line. And in it goes. The baby hook by Jean-Paul falls. Her team's up by two. Coming back is Glenlon. Dulder misses it, but Wood with another rebound. And she swatted. She gets it to a wide open Aaron O'Neill. And again, a lot of short baskets underneath for Glenlon is paying off. Well, that's what Glenlon wants. That's going to be their bread and butter to victory, of course, is going to be underneath. As we can see with River East, what uh, Coach uh, Pangelina wants to do is he wants to, uh, when he goes into a delay, try and free up uh, Sharon Jean-Paul and uh, try and get some points off of her just sheer athleticism. Foul on the play against Glenlon. Leah Gaynor will go to the line. We're tied at 55 with 6.34 to go in the fourth. Well, we're into a situation now, Sean, where each team is uh, executing just what their coaches want them to do. I think what we have to look at now in terms of a break in anything, it's going to be uh, which player picks up the fourth, the fifth. I think it's the glass and the foul line that's going to decide this one. And don't forget about overtime. That looms very large here. These te two teams are very evenly matched here this evening. <coughs> Gainer misses the second, but we have a lane violation against River East. Glenlon will get the ball. Checking back into play is number four, Laura Lindback. That's referee Alvestad that uh, caught uh, Leah on that uh, foot violation. She did, however, get that first one, and now we've got uh, River East Kodiaks enjoying a 56-55 lead here with six and a half minutes left in this 4A girls provincial final. Lindback with the ball. Dumps it into Wood. Comes back out to Lindback. Contact made. No call, though. Ball goes to O'Neill. She shoots it from the junction. It doesn't go. Rebounded nicely by Peich. It's a good look by Aaron, but I think Coach Kornberger wants that ball a little lower. We've got a full house here at the Bison East Gymnasium, but the Pipers fans and the Hawks fans are still coming in. we got the boys next, but nothing's been decided here in the girls. As back comes O'Neill, tries to avoid the travel, and she hits the deck. We'll see if she's okay. Well, we've got uh, an excellent job by Aaron, first of all, on the uh, block on uh, Karen Dick, but uh, trying to pump that ball down the floor, and uh, Cheryl Jean-Paul just too quick. Aaron O'Neill in a bit of pain. She's going to take a seat for a moment. Ball's inbound to defend. Avoids the check. Gets it across to Kane. Kane with a nice ball fake on Dick. 
and that gives her an easy lane for the basket. It's a great job by Allison. Allison Kane and Patricia Wood have come in here and they're playing behind Dulder and O'Neill, and they've just done a great job for Coach Kornberger. Sometimes you need those, you know, players who aren't necessarily the stars to step up in a provincial <coughs> final. And there you see Wood with another rebound. I'm sure she's well over 10. That's a great blockout once again by Patricia. She keeps Zula Samborski off the offensive glass for the River East Kodiaks. Lynn back. Skip pass across to Dulder. Goes off the hands of Jean-Paul and out of bounds. One point lead for the Lions. And they've got the ball. That's the second one that Laura has managed to get away with, Sean. Against uh, someone with the athletic ability of Cheryl Jean-Paul, you've got to make sure you make a stronger pass than that. Quick inbounds pass intercepted by Cheryl Jean-Paul. She comes back down the court. Gets it across to Karen Dick, who's just <laughs> almost tackled by number 10, Allison Kane. Well, Allison's doing the right job. Coach Kornberger wanted them to come out. Make sure that when Karen's there at that three-point arc, you've got to come out, you've got to take that away. We're going to have a look here at Allison. She's going to do the right thing here. She comes out, but she's just a little bit too aggressive. Don't worry about that basketball. Just take the drive and the shot away from Karen so that down on the, a little bit lower on the defense, that we can have a player rotate to take away that corner shot. That foul is the seventh against Glenlon, and as you see, Karen Dix at the line in the bonus situation. She hits the crucial front end. Substitutions back in a play. Aaron Muir, number 42 for Glenlon, and number 13, Aaron O'Neill. She's fine. She's back in the game, and she'll take out Allison Kane. Glenlon better get ready for some pressure here from the Kodiaks. Dick hits the second. One point lead. This time it's in favor of the Kodiaks. O'Neill to inbound. Lobs it in to Finn. She goes into traffic. It's intercepted by Dick. And Karen wisely pulls it out and sets up the half-court offense. Excellent call by Coach uh, Pangeline in there. That time... We haven't seen uh, this pressure from uh, River East that much here in the second half. Right there at this juncture of the game. Excellent call. Gainer to Dick. 4.45 to go in the fourth. River East in the delay offense looking for a wide open player before they make a move. Gainer just playing pitch and catch with Karen Dick. Ben applying some pressure. Ball across to Jean-Paul. And back to Dick. Once again, as we mentioned, an excellent call by uh, Coach uh, Pangeline. And first of all, he knows that uh, Karen makes that uh, foul shot. They're going to put some pressure, try for the steal. And if it does work out in their favor, they're going to end up with the lead and the ball. That's here we go, Heather. Oh, and that's a big block by Aaron O'Neill. Ball battling in the corner. Jean-Paul gets hit out of bounds. And the Kodiaks will still have the ball. I thought it might have gone off Jean-Paul. But we have a timeout on the floor called by Glenlon. The score, the River East Kodiaks 58. The Glenlon lines 57 with 4.09 to go in the fourth. Let's see if we can listen okay. in to one of the timeouts. Let's look at special. Let's look at special. We're going to run it on them. No, you know what? We're going to go monster a little bit. But wait. You guys, we're going to pop it up. You don't have the patience to wait. There's still lots of time. Now, look, here's how we do special. Watch. We've got the monster front of you, right? Okay? The trail comes up and he cuts her and checks her up here. The, if the ball's in one of these two people, the forward does the same thing to her. You got me? Don't worry about her. Patty's moment here. There it is. Now, if it goes to the side, the monster has to come up and take the side. The car has got to take the high goes. Well, we've got a situation, Sean. Coach Kornberger doesn't think that River East has the patience to uh, play the delay game. So as the, if we've got to watch here. Where the ball comes to the top. The ball comes to the top. It's either going to be in uh, Karen Dick or uh, Cheryl Jean-Paul or perhaps Leah Gaynor's hands. Whatever the situation might be, the person that, uh, that is out at the top, there's gonna, they're going to apply pressure. They're going to try and get this ball coughed up here. And there you see it. There's the quick pressure on Karen Dick. Which Another is player is going to come out here soon. There you go. There's Delder. Here we go. Looking Here for we the go. trap. There, just what they designed in the timeout. But Dick avoids it. Gets it down low to Wedlake. Drives baseline. Puts it off the glass. It doesn't go. Rebounded by Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul again. Pulls it out and it's intercepted by Finn. 
Good job by Coach Kornberger. This is what he said that what would happen if they apply if they uh, applied special that what was going to happen it was that the Kodiaks would cough it up instead of pulling the ball back out. Pass into number 42, Jeannie, or I should that say Aaron Muir. Muir comes up with a big one. Off the bench, Aaron Muir with a big hoop. One point lead for Glenlawn, and again, River East in the stall. They're ready. The to, same go situation, going to go again here, Sean. I was just going to say that the same thing that Coach Kornberger talked about in the timeout. Wet Lake to Jean-Paul. Inside to Zamborski. Ball takes a funny bounce and goes to number two, Leah Gaynor, who hits the basket again. It's a one-point lead. Now it's for River East. That was an excellent job twice in a row by the Glenmont Lions. Just unfortunate for them, the ball, the ball bounced the wrong way. But a great job by Leah Gaynor, being in the right place at the right time. She took the ball up strong and put it in. And with just uh, over two and a half minutes left, we've got the Kodiaks with a one-point lead. The ball goes down to O'Neill. And she goes off the glass with a second shot. Big rebound and basket by Aaron O'Neill. 61-60 is the score in favor of the Lions. 2.30 to go. Jean-Paul, three-pointer. In and out. Ball's on the floor. Who's got it? It's the Lions who come up with it. Aaron Muir. And she's mugged. And it's an intentional foul called against Karen Dick, who is visibly upset. He called... Go, referee Williams is going to call that. We're going to get a look here on our screen. And there you see the signal. Intentional foul called. And what that means... What that means, Sean, is we've got a situation where if you're Glenlon, you've got to be pretty happy because they're going to go to the line, they're going to shoot two, and they're going to get the ball back. E.G. Ogum's wily veteran trying to calm down Karen Dick, who has fouled out of this game. Five fouls against Karen. Amazing to see the concentration on the face of Aaron O'Neill saying this is our game. And then of course Brian Kornberger worried about the easy threes by Jean-Paul. Well as you uh, mentioned, uh, Sean, you made mention of uh, the people that were on uh, Glenlon's volleyball team. And then uh, we've, gone, we've gone all the way under Coach Bradshaw to that final. You have a look at uh, who's out there on the floor right now. And uh, it's that experience once again. What's very important here, Aaron Muir is going to get to shoot two. She a little bit outside. <laughs> this is the first just a bit outside, as you mentioned. Aaron's a little disgusted with herself. Don't worry, she's going to come back here. She's going to put this one down. In and out, doesn't fall. Ball's on the floor. Who's got it? Jump ball called, and on the alternating possession, Glenlon will hang on to the ball. That's a huge offensive uh, push there by Tanya Delder once again. Patricia Wood back into play. She replaces Aaron Muir. She'll be disappointed with herself from the way she performed at the free throw line, but she played well when she was in there. So what we had was a situation where they just called a fifth foul on uh, Karen Dick. It wasn't an intentional foul. Lynn back to inbound. Gets it in quick to O'Neill. She goes off the glass. Three-point lead for Glenlon with 2.17 to go. O'Neill is pumped. Jean-Paul drives all the way down, goes coast to coast, kicks it back out, but she's called for traveling. Well, what happened there is Cheryl's got to take a look at the clock. There's lots of time left, Sean. No time to panic here. It's only three points with 2.10 to go. It's still anybody's ball game. Lots of time. Lots of time, as you mentioned, down three. We've got uh, Jean-Paul on the floor, Heather Wedlake on the floor, Pam Peich on the floor. They can hit a three-pointer if they needed one. There's no need for a three-pointer yet. Let's just, just play some basketball. Going There's inside two for two. Yeah. We have a timeout call by River East. Let's listen in. They come back, you go man to man. If they get over court, you got to go man to man. Okay? Like a chase two three. Okay? you got to double up. Okay? Watch the inside. Watch for the long time. you got to skip that out. Lori, we get a look at the fans still trying to stream in right now. They're holding them back. 
what they're going to do is wait till some of these River East and Glenlawn fans clear out because we've got standing room only right now. There's still, as from what we can see, a lineup that's going outside. We've probably got about 500, 600 people still waiting to get in here to the Bison East Gymnasium. What I'm uh, going to say right now is I don't think these Glenlawn or, or River East people are going to leave, Sean. We are going so to be either. back to the rafters here for the boys' game, and we've had a great crowd here for the girls' game. The number one ranked John Taylor Pipers take on the upstart number seven ranked Mennonite Brethren Hawks, coached by our video on friend Ken Apolko. There's the score in this game. Nothing's been decided here. It's Glenlawn 63, River East 60. You're watching video on Cable 11 sports coverage of the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association Provincial 4A Basketball Championships. What we've got to do if we're Glenlawn now, let's just simply run offense here. Just under two minutes to go. They kick it out to Dulder. Back to Finn. Lynn back. She's a three-point shooter. She drives in, fakes the shot, then takes the shot. It goes long. Rebound by Wood. Oh, that's going to be a travel ball is called by referee Brown. Great job by Patricia once again on the offensive glass shot. I thought she was going to get the basket and the foul, but they called her for the travel. Huge turnaround because River East is down by three with a minute and a half to go. They're still in this one. We've got to stay tighter to Jean-Paul. Deep in three-point territory. She forces the three, and she's fouled by Melissa Finn. And Jean-Paul will go to the line to shoot three, and importantly, Laurie, it stops the clock. Well, we're in a situation, Sean, you mentioned what a turn of events. We had uh, a shot that uh, might be a little bit uh, questionable down at the other end by Glenlon. A great offensive rebound by uh, Patricia Wood. You were anticipating the basket and the foul. So was I. Now we're in a situation where Melissa Finn takes the bad foul on Jean-Paul. She's going to shoot three. And as you mentioned, Sean, the clock is stopped. Jean-Paul misses the first of her three shots. She hits the second, cuts the lead to two. If Cheryl Jean-Paul makes this, get ready for pressure once again from the Kodiaks. Fans rumbling the seats here. Shot doesn't go. It goes out of bounds. And River East will maintain it. Good call. It looked like it went off the hands of Glenlawn. That was an excellent call by referee Williams. Right there on the top, Aaron O'Neill was the last one to get her hands on that ball. River East with a chance to tie with a two-point basket. Jean-Paul looks at the line and shoots the three. River East with a one-point lead, 1.18 to go. As we said earlier, you got to stay tighter on Jean-Paul. Finn working against Keener. Driving into the paint, pulls it out. Still 1.05 to go. Lots of time. Ball inside to Aaron O'Neill. And she's fouled by Ola Zamborski. Amazing to see the concentration on the face of Aaron O'Neill saying this is our game. And then of course Brian Kornberger worried about the easy threes by Jean Well as you uh, mentioned, uh, Sean, you made mention of uh, the people that were on uh, Glenlawn's volleyball team. And then uh, we've, gone, we've gone all the way under Coach Bradshaw out of that final. You have a look at... Uh, Now we see EJ Ogum's talking to Zamborska. EJ does some great work with the players, settling them down. She's an experienced player and coach, and she really knows how to talk to the, to the girls. What's happening there? A situation where EJ jumps in, uh, as you mentioned, Sean, a great relationship with the girls, and uh, she does a good job letting them know. I mean, we still got a minute left here. I mean, Ola had a wonderful game. She played hard. And now if we're Glenlawn, what we've got to do here is, when we have the ball, we're looking to go inside, especially with uh, Ola and Karen out of the game. O'Neal misses the second. We're tied at 64. One minute to go in this provincial 4A girls championship. I wouldn't be surprised right now if uh, Coach uh, Pangelina is going to go for one shot, Sean. He just might. Gainer with the ball now. 45 seconds to go. It looks like they're going to play for the final shot for the provincial championship. It's a good call here by uh, Coach Pangelin, and He knows that he's in trouble down low. What he's going to do is we're going to hold the ball. We're going for one shot. We're either going to win it or we're going to go into overtime. 30 seconds to go. Wedlake with the ball to Gainer. The Kodiaks with the ball playing for the provincial championship. Jean-Paul to Gainer. 20 seconds to go now. 
you got to think by about 10 seconds you've got to run the offense. With 18 to go, Riveries calls timeout. And now, Laurie, it'll be interesting to hear what Coach Pangelin says in terms of running an offense. Well, Coach Pangelin, we're going to listen in. He's setting up a play here. The thing we've got to remember here is no fouls. So what we're looking at is, uh, if we're River East, we're going to try and uh, free up Cheryl Jean-Paul by setting a couple of screens. We've got to make sure we don't get called for a moving screen. One of the hardest things is going to be right now, it's going to be interesting to see who Coach Kornberger is going to put on the on the person throwing in the ball here. Now, oh, he's not. If you're Glenn Lawn, you've got to guard that person, number five, Cheryl Jean-Paul, closely. Kicks out to wet like 14 seconds to go. Would like to Jean Paul guarded closely by Laura Lindback. Avoids the or goes around the screen. Shot doesn't go. Rebounded by who? Would like she gets it. Five seconds to go. Does River East get the shot off? Three, two, one. Shot doesn't go. We are going to overtime. Well, Sean, you called it early. You called it with about six minutes left in this game that uh, overtime loomed large and it was a possibility. Excellent offensive rebound by Heather Wedlick. Uh, Dad Ross here just about lost his seat. I'll tell you, he's very excited. Everybody's excited. They've got to let these fans in here. This place is going to be on fire for the next four minutes. It looks like they are letting some of the fans in now. I don't know where they're going to sit. Let's listen in to Brian Kornberger in this break. Ten out of the game, and we got 34 out of the game, okay? We're running 1-3-1, one, one, and we're getting it inside or for a wide open outside shot. Why don't we run the triple first? Well? You know what? We're going to go with some triple. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. You ready to go 1-3-1? One, one? Laura's here. Here's Tanya. Here's Melissa. There and there. Let's run some triple, okay? And mix it up with one three one. Right? Guys, our defense is diamond in one on Laurie, we get a great look here of all the fans streaming into the Bison East Gymnasium. They're going to get the four-minute overtime here between River East and Glenlawn. Just a fantastic provincial final as we thought it was going to be. Well, it's an excellent job by both teams and both uh, sets of coaches here. As uh, far as Glenlawn is concerned, as we heard from Coach uh, Kornberger, we want good, uh, strong passes, and we're going to go inside. He knows that uh, with... Uh, Ula gone and with Karen gone, the threat is Cheryl Jean-Paul. Down at the defensive end, you're going to see Glenlon go diamond in one. What they're going to do is uh, we're going to have four girls in a diamond-shaped uh, configuration are going to play a zone, and we're going to probably stick uh, probably Melissa Finn on uh, Cheryl Jean-Paul. They're going to do the jump again. Just to inform the viewers at home, in high school they play four-minute overtime periods, two timeouts each for each bench. And they jump it to start again at overtime. And then they'll do the alternating possession arrow following that. Ball is taken by Glenlon quickly. They get to Lynn back. She's on the left side. She kicks it back out to Finn. Three-pointer. Doesn't go. Rebounded by Wedlake. Well, it was cool. Coach Kornberger said, we're going to go. We're going to look inside. We're going to go 1-3-1. One, one. We're going to look inside or a wide open outside shot. We got the wide open outside shot. I like the first option better. Get the ball inside. Lisa Johnson with the ball. She uses her dribble and gets it across to Wedlake. Wedlake playing up top now. Gets it to Gaynor. Again, Rivery's content to take their time and set up the offense. Peich to Gaynor. Working off the screen set by Johnson. 3-10 to go. In overtime, Jean-Paul goes in, shoots it from the junction, and it falls. And even in traffic, Cheryl Jean-Paul can hit the tough shots. Well, what Laura Lindback has to do, the whole idea of the diamond in one, is not to let Cheryl Jean-Paul get possession of the basketball. Laura's got to make sure that she sticks to her like glue. 
Fenn with the ball. And the first of the two timeouts by Glenlawn, called by Coach Kornberger. And right now, let's see if we can listen in to River East during this timeout and Coach Pangelini. you got to play special on these guys. Now we're going 1-3-1. One, one. Going 1-3-1 one, one on offense. Listen up, guys. In the middle, Scotty and I. 1-3. Okay, 2-3 zone. Well, if I put my hand up, okay, when I put my hand up, you go straight out, man to man, whoever's closest to you. Okay? Let's go. Oh, River East. Fire! Well, we've we got Sean. We've got both neutral. coaches working hard here. When they're running the delay game, and I want Patty, I mean, can you out on this girl? Okay, Patty's back in. here. If it goes to the side, the monster will get her. It's up here, both you guys, and we're trapping the ball. Okay, let's go. Get it. One, two, one, and open. We see some of the John Taylor Piper fans in attendance here. They're, they're waiting for the boys to take to the court. But well, we've got 2.46 left in the first overtime. 66-64 is the score for River East. But Glenlawn inbounds the ball. It's Wood who has it. Melissa Finn at the top here. That's Dulder on the baseline. And she hits for two. Ties this game back up with two and a half minutes left, John. 66-66. Ball goes down low to Peich. Just hangs on to it. Looks for Wedlake, and it's intercepted by Dulder, and Wedlake will pick up the foul. I think that's her fourth. Well, what we've got to do if we're uh, River East, we've got to make sure. We're going to get a look here. We've got to be a lot more careful with that ball. See, that's a lazy pass. Good job by Tanya. If you're going to make the bounce pass like that, make it hard and firm and make sure it gets in her hands. Dulder at the line in the bonus situation. Both teams in the bonus now. Tanya, excellent foul shooter here, Sean. Yep, very calm and relaxed player. <laughs> Misses the first, hits the front of the rim. We're still tied at 66-66. Well, after we uh, jinx Tanya on the first one, let's see if she can put this one away. And she doesn't. Another big rebound by Heather Wedlake. Heather Wedlake playing with four fouls. Already uh, we've got... Uh, Ola Samborski and Karen Dick out of the game for the Kodiaks. Gaynor goes down to the baseline to Johnson. Back out to Gaynor. 2.05 to go. Bounce pass to Johnson. She just maintains possession. Right now it's Legal Antoniak who's uh, Cheryl Jean Paul's new shadow. Johnson on the drive gets into the double team situation looking for some help. Bounces it to a wide open. Gaynor, she can't finish. It goes off the hands of Johnson. What a great read by Leah Gaynor. We had Johnson in trouble on the baseline. Great double team by the Lions. She read it perfectly, cut into open space, and just clunked it off the front iron. We're tied, click, click here with 1.30 to go. Falls down low to Wood. Patricia Wood gives the Lions a two-point lead, 1.25 to go. Cheryl Jean-Paul with the ball. Baseline shot doesn't go, but there's a foul. We'll see who it goes against. It might be River East's Leah Gaynor. I, th I think it's going to go against Leah. We're going to have a look here at the bread and butter, as we've been mentioning, all telecast. Out of the 1-3-1 set, down into Patricia Wood, goes up strong. Patricia has had just one heck of a game for the Glenlawn Lions. Timeout call by River East, and I agree with you. I'm just impressed with the way Patricia has played in this provincial championship. 68-66 for Glenlawn. Let's take a look at that last foul. And it looked like... Uh, it's going to be Johnson, 33. Leaning in on, on the play there. Let's listen in to Brian Kornberger. That's right. Jane's in the middle. Like this. Jane's in the middle. And if the foul goes to the side, Jane's on the ball, trapping with this person. And then Patty's back here. That's our special. Our game. Again, we see some of the fans streaming into the Bison East Gymnasium. Lori, two teams not willing to give an inch. We've got a great girls' final here. So as we mentioned, Sean, an excellent job by uh, both coaching staff 
an excellent job by the girls on the floor and on the bench. As you mentioned, uh, both teams, they want to win. They're not going to give an inch. We've got a chance here now if we are Glenlon with Aaron O'Neill at the line to go up three and possibly four. Aaron O'Neill with some crucial free throws. She hits the first, 69-66 for Glenlon. 119 on the clock. This free throw is huge because it could give Glenlon a four-point lead. In and out, it doesn't fall. Heather Wedlake with another rebound. Well, it's interesting here, Sean. Three-point difference. We've, uh, We've period seen two of point. overtime. Could be. Ball's rebounded. By O'Neill, crucial rebound by Glenlon. They get it to Finn. Goes off her hands and out of bounds. River East will have the ball. What we've got to do if we're River East, we've got to make sure that we move the ball around here a little bit. What River East would like to do is to score quickly and apply some pressure. Cheryl Jean-Paul, that's the person they want to have the ball. 57 seconds to go. Sean Paul works off the screen, set by Pice. She forces the three, it doesn't go. It's rebounded by Dulder. They get it to Finn. River East might be thinking about fouling even though they're in foul trouble. And that'll go against Gaynor. Well, we're in a situation right now, we mentioned earlier, Sean, that this was gonna be one from the foul line. And it looks like right now, Michelle Finn has a chance to just simply slam the door on the River East Kodiaks. We have another timeout. Let's take a look at that foul. We've got Leah Gaynor here after Finn. Leah knows that she has to foul. Stop the clock. Melissa will go to the line after this timeout. Let's see if we can listen in to one of the huddles. You hit one, you go for a two-pointer right away. Look to rush up the floor. Everyone pound the board, throw it up. Get a foul. Get a foul. Okay? And you get a three-point play. Okay? If you hit four, okay? You need two possessions. You gotta hit the three. Okay? You're gonna have to get, get the ball to Cheryl in this hand. Okay? Get two, two or three points, even. Okay? Sparingly. If you got the diamond, you get five. Corey, a very good point by Coach Kornberger at the end of that timeout. He wants them to shoot uncontested layups, meaning no three-pointers, no long shots. No. Get the easy baskets. What we've got to do here, if we're River East, it's the uh, point differential that's going to determine how many uh, possessions and what we're going to do with those possessions. 41 it, seconds to go in overtime, and you're right, they're down by three. Melissa's free throws here are crucial. And she hits the first. Glenn Lawn leads it by four. If we end up in a situation, Michelle makes this. River East, we've got to come down, we've got to score quickly and foul. Jean-Paul with the ball. Driving down the court, looking for the three. No, she bounces it into Gainer, open for the two. Good two-point basket, 33 seconds to go. Excellent job right there by Cheryl Jean-Paul. Dulder to O'Neill. Her team leads it by two. They've got to beat the 10-second count. Fan in trouble to O'Neill. Just gets across in time, but the ball hits the floor. Who's got it? It's Wood. Clock's still ticking. Players thought the whistle had gone. O'Neill goes in off the glass. It's rebounded by Dolder, and she hits it. Oh, Ten God. seconds to go. Four-point lead for Glenlon. We had a situation there. Coach Pangelina is on. Referee Alvarez, We've got a situation where everyone thought that the whistle had gone. We'll have to check that to see what had happened. But in any case, the Glenlon Lions win the Provincial 4A Basketball Championships defeating River East 72-68 in overtime. Oh, we've got an, if we can get a look at this, we've got, oh, this is, this is not the way we want this game to finish, Sean. We had a situation there when Aaron O'Neill hit the floor, we had to have a travel ball called or a foul called. There couldn't simply be a no call. All the players on the court had stopped Meanwhile, five seconds have ticked off the clock. Let's have a look at it now and see what happened on that exchange. Here's the ball crossing the center court, Lori. There's the contact. Players hit the ground. Players are all stopping, as did our camera person. 
Everyone thought we were looking for a whistle. I was looking at the clock to see when they were going to stop the clock, but they let it run, of course, because there was no whistle. Well, regardless, Sean, you're getting the... You stick with video on Cable 11 Sports, you're going to have some excitement. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, you see on your screen, regardless of the way it finished, we now have, without a doubt, the 4A Provincial Ladies Champions for 1996. The Glenlawn Lions win a squeaker in overtime, 72-68 to 68 over the River East Kodiak. We're going to have the awards presentations in just a moment, but Lori, what a fantastic game from start to finish. Biggest lead either way was seven, but what a fantastic game. Up-tempo game the whole way. We saw just about everything on the floor. Uh, definitely an up-tempo uh, game. As you uh, mentioned, Sean, great uh, job by uh, both teams, both set of coaches. We mentioned early in the telecast that it was the glass and the foul line that was going to win this game, and that's what it came down to. You called the chance of overtime with still six and a half minutes into the left in the game, and once again, just excellent action here. You get a look at the people that are here. We're just swamped. What we've got to do is just see what the scoop is here when we come to high school athletics. Player of the game for Glen Lawn, number 13, Aaron O'Neill. A great job for Aaron. Uh, as you mentioned, Sean, a uh, member of that uh, volleyball finalist team, it's got to be sweet for these girls to come back and answer the bell and, uh, as we mentioned, win it all here at the uh, 4A Basketball Championships. Let's see if we can uh, listen in on public address announcer Scott Martin as he... Uh, prepares to make the announcements for the award ceremonies. At this time I'd like to see the awards presentation. I'd like to welcome everyone here for the 1996 4A Provincial High School Basketball Championships. We'd like to congratulate both teams for an exciting overtime performance. We'd also like to welcome our awards presenters. They are Jane Enstrom, the PRAS president of the MHSAA and Carol Plain Hosgood, the Director of Community Relations for the Milk Marketing Board and Dairy Producers. Now we please like to ask the captains of the River East Kodiaks to come up and accept their MHSAA finalist banner. Now I'll call up each player to present the medallions courtesy of Seal Test Dairy Producers. Number two, Leah Gaynor. Number four, Nicole Paneligan. Number five, Cheryl Jean-Paul. Number eight, Carrie Bone. Number ten, Ola Sambraska. Number 13, Carolyn Bell. Number 14, Heather Oedlick. Number 15, Sarah Fuller. Number 22, Pam Peich. Number 33, Eliza Johnson. And number 34, Karen Dick. Coaches, Uanus Panelesian and E.J. Ogums. Now we would like to ask the captains of the champion Glenline Lions to come up and accept their MHSAA championship banner and trophy. We would also ask that the following players come forth to accept their championship medallions courtesy of Seal Test Dairy Producers and the championship t-shirts courtesy of Manitoba Milk Producers. Number four, Laura Lindbach. Number ten, Allison Kane. 
Number 11, Tanya Dalder. Number 13, Aaron O'Neill. Number 14, Melissa Fan. Number 15, Krista Whitmire. Number 20, Patricia Wood. Number 22, Natalie College. Number 32, Janie Dada. Number 42, Aaron Muir. Number 44, Jane Ligo Antonia. And number 55, Tyler Brown. Coaches, Brian Kornberger, John Fagan, and Mary Rolder. And the managers, Delaney Miller, Pam Graham, Shannon Bracken, and Catherine Morton. Schools Athletic Association would like to acknowledge this year's 4A high school all-star team. Each all-star will receive an MHS AA Cantel all-star plaque and Converse t-shirts. The all-stars will be presented by national champions from the University of Manitoba, T.L. Johannesson and Stacy Ewell. This year's all-stars are from St. John's, Lisa Schaefer. From the River East Kodiaks, Karen Dick. From the Glen